One of our ambitions since we've had a boat has been to leave the confines of the inland waterway system and to have a go at the sea. Here we are, mission accomplished. We've never actually um, done any coastal cruising before, so we knew we had to do a lot of preparation and we've been on the sea now and we had a really successful trip. So it's with the benefit of hindsight that um, I'm making this video um, just to show you the preparation we did and hopefully if you're thinking of moving from the Indian waterways to coastal cruising this might just help you. One of the first things we did is we carried out some reckeys to try and find a suitable place where we could take the boat for the first time on the sea. Um, where the closest bit to us is the Bristol Channel. It's got a massive tidal range and it's not really suitable for beginners. So uh, we decided we need to go somewhere else. One of our ambitions for some time now has been to take our own boat to the Needles. So we decided that we'd pump for the Solent. Alan Bay. next things we did is we bought an Imray chart for the area. In this case it's chart C3 which covers the sort of area around the Isle of Wight, Southampton, Portsmouth etc. So we bought the chart and we drove down to the area without the boat and we stayed and we went around a few marinas I'm a member of the Shetland Owners Association Boat Forum and the administrator who runs the forum had recommended uh, Mercury Marina which is up the River Hamble there and it's quite sheltered waters come down into Southampton water you've got the whole of the Solent to play with so we went and had a recce at Mercury and we were more than happy with it of course it's all very well having the chart but there's loads and loads of symbols and different numbers and what have you on the chart so we needed to make sure that we knew how to navigate and tell what the different symbols were so that was the next step the back of the chart had just so much information on it really useful it had all the keys to the symbols and it also had these things called tidal stream directional rate and um, we needed to learn about those because they're quite important and they can have a real impact on what happens to your boat and what the conditions are like and how fast you can go. Doing. 6.7 knots through the water but only about 3.5 3.6 knots over the ground we bought this book it's the royal yachting association power book handbook and it's designed for you to read before you go on the power boat um, level two course which we didn't go on because we couldn't afford it but we will do in future but we paid £15.50 for this book and it was absolutely brilliant and I learned so much from this book and it's got bits and pieces on everything all the navigation um, stuff that we have had a look at on the charts uh, safety things like boat handling the weather a lot on boat handling actually and I would say that Having read this book, it even improved my boat handling on the Indian waterways. Um, it was just a mine of information, all the um, rules of the sea and stuff, and can't recommend it highly enough. 
after reading the powerboat book it was clear we were definitely not going to go to sea without a VHF radio on the boat it's pretty much essential so myself and my wife we enrolled on a VHF course to obtain our VHF short range certificate and you can't use a VHF without one of those certificate and when you then purchase your VHF radio you have to get what's called an MMSI number which is an individual number for that radio and you have to obtain that by applying online to Ofcom and getting your ship radio license. Now I'm informed from the teachings we had that it's a serious offence to use a radio without either of these two things and you can get serious fines. We bought this standard Horizon uh, DSC radio with GPS and you could use it with compass mode and it would tell you your coordinates and your speed over ground and your course over ground and uh, we found this to be really really useful. It goes without saying that one of these, a compass, is essential but we also learned that one of these is definitely essential uh, which is your echo sounder, fish finder, depth finder, whatever you want to call it. We've got a Garmin one, you can put alarms on it and it will give you the depth. It will show any debris or fish in the water and it also shows you what the bottom's like and, and you can tell what sort of what you've got at the bottom. In this case we're, we're in the basin on the river and it's all just soft mud which is flat. Another thing I did a lot of uh, in preparation was watching a lot of YouTube videos, uh, especially this guy here, Dylan Winter, I don't know if anyone knows him. Uh, he does the Keep Turning Left uh, sailing series. He's not a big fan of motorboaters, but um, you've got to love him. And uh, I found it helped a lot watching these videos and I learned a lot. One of the things I kept seeing in his videos were that he uses the Reed's Nautical Almanac. So we bought ourselves a copy of that for 2016. And this, this is the Boater's Bible for coastal cruising, definitely. So we used this when we went down to the Solent. And it had all your tide times at a glance for the whole year which was really useful for using out your tidal streams the depth of the water and checking it against the weather to see whether you had something called wind over tide which can make little small irritating waves up which can get bigger depending on the wind state and it had plans of all the different harbors with all the pilotage information such as the different buoys or lights it had a mine of information for example there's areas in the Solent that you're not allowed to go into which are the sort of the shipping lanes the areas of danger where all the big uh, cargo ships turn so there's absolute unbelievable amount of information here and over the course of a week cruising around the Solent we learnt so much uh, using the information in this book. On the other side of that red boy is the channel that I need to cross but I'm going to wait for him to go past. Okay I was a bit paranoid about safety going down to the sea. I wanted to make sure that I thought of eventualities in case we had a breakdown. So we we obtained this Sea Start membership. The idea with the Sea Start membership was that uh, if you broke down out in the channel in Solent, you just shut up on the VHF. Uh, one of the um, motor engineers would come to you in a rib they try and fix the problem on your boat there and then and if the worst case scenario and they couldn't they would just uh, tow you back in to port and you'd have to get your boat sorted. Thankfully we never had to use it. For the biggest peace of mind we uh, managed to acquire a backup engine for the boat. 
we bought a six horsepower um, long shaft. It was an extra long shaft actually, uh, outboard, which we got second hand. I serviced it all, made sure that it worked. And we had that with a quick pull start. It's the worst that had happened. And we made sure we had the fire extinguishers. This is the anchor. And there's just this poor, small shackle holding it on. So I'm going to replace it with a much better stainless steel one. That'll be much stronger. And um, we definitely made sure that we had decent life jackets as well. And these heli handsome ones, I think they're they're rated quite high. So they're not the offshore ones, they're the next one down. And it was absolutely fine for the coastal cruising that we were doing. The other thing we ended up doing is we actually got a life jacket for the dog. That's all right. It was quite good with him jumping on and off the boat on different pontoons to know that should he have gone in, we'd have been able to grab hold of him and fish him out. Another little tip we had was when we went on the Shetland owners site, somebody had made these passage plan documents. Uh, I found I found these quite useful when planning a passage. So I'd sort of get, get in my mind where we're going from and to, could put the different tide times in, work out depths, etc. Uh, put some waypoints if we needed to. We were able to um, put waypoints in the VHF if we wanted to, but I used an app on my mobile phone, uh, put the weather details in. So it was just, it was really useful. What worked really brilliantly was I had an old Samsung S3 mobile phone and I downloaded this app called MX Mariner for Android. And it allowed me to download all the charts for the Solent offline and just use the GPS on my phone and I used it as basically a chart plotter for the week and it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's bald head. So we're using that green boy as a reference, bald head. And then the next one we're aiming for is that yellow one. And it was only three or four pounds per chart. So it worked out really cheap way of uh, having a chart plotter on board. One of the last things we did before going over there was I made a list of exactly everything that we needed to prep for before going down there, check everything on the boat. We had a full service of the engine. Uh, I put a new propeller on for the sea actually, which is a bigger one. Just check the oil, check all the coolant, the water, make sure all stopcocks are fine. All bilge pumps were working, the blower was working for the engine. All the instruments were working and just really making sure she was a uh, ship shape and tickety boo. As a result of all the preparation and the hard work we carried out, we had an absolutely great first trip on the sea without incident. We had 10 days in the sun, which was absolutely brilliant fun. And uh, I highly recommend it to anyone who's thinking of making a move from the inland waterways to sea. I mean, it really just opens up your cruising options and it's so much fun. Uh, yeah, it was just great. If you like this video, uh, please drop me a comment and hit the like button. If you really liked it, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Stop